Let's create the product structure of our new assembly using top-down design techniques. And right now I have a part model open. This contains a freestyle feature which uses subdivisional modeling to define the outer mold line for my new vehicle. And I'm going to come back to this in a minute. To start off my brand new assembly, I'll click the new icon. Then I'll change the type to assembly and I'll enter in the number according to my company's convention and fill in the common name. I click OK and since use default template is checked, my assembly is created using my company's standard start assembly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by creating my top level skeleton model. So I'll click the create button and in the create component dialog box, I'll change the type to skeleton model. It comes up with a default name and I'm only going to have one skeleton at the top level. So I will take off the trailing digits and fill in the name common name. Then I will click OK, and 99% of the time I would use copy from existing and use my company's template, but I already have a part model that contains geometry that I want to be in the skeleton. So instead, I will click the Browse button and grab that part model from In Session. And when I click OK, my skeleton model is created and it contains that feature that I already want to use as the outer mold line or OML for my new product. So now I can go ahead and start creating my major subassembly. So I'm just going to create two subassemblies at the top level for now. So I will click the create button and change the type to subassembly and enter in the number and this will be my structural assembly. I'm just going to enter that for the name for now and click OK. And for my template, I'll just go ahead and use this default template. Click OK. And for this component, I'm just going to leave it at the default constraint for now because all I'm doing at this point is defining my structure. And let's go ahead and create another subassembly at the top level. Click the Create button. And and this will be my electrical installation. Click OK. Use the same default template as before. And again, I'm just dropping it in at the default constraint which aligns the default datum planes of the component with the default datum planes of the assembly. So I've got my top level created, my top level skeleton, and two sub-assemblies. Now what I can do is start adding components to my sub-assembly. And so I could open up the structural sub-assembly in its own separate window, or I could activate it, which allows me to work in the same main window. So this subassembly will have a skeleton. I'll click the create button and change the type to skeleton model. And again, take off the trailing digits if I'm not going to use them. Fill in the name. Oops, this is structural. And click OK and use my, this time when I'm creating my skeleton, I'm going to use my company's standard start part and click OK. And my skeleton is created. If I open the skeleton in its own separate window, well, all it's got are my default datums from my skeleton model. If this structural subassembly is going to use the entire OML, what I can do is back in the assembly window over here, activate the skeleton and use a data sharing feature called merge inheritance to grab 
all the geometry from the top level skeleton into the subassembly skeleton. So now if I open the subassembly skeleton, you see that it has a merge feature and brings in all the geometry from my top level skeleton. Inside of my structural sub excuse me, my structural subassembly, I can create a subassembly in there so I can activate it and click the create button and type in for my subassembly its number. This will be my frame subassembly. Oops. Default constraint. Hit the check mark. And then I could go ahead and create a part inside here. And at this point, I might almost be getting a little redundant. I'm going to click the create button. This time, though, I'm going to change the type to part, enter in my number, and maybe this is going to be my base. Click OK, use my standard start part, and just dropping it in at the default constraint. And if I expand, the subassembly, you see that there is a part inside of there. Now, for the electrical subassembly, I'm not going to go through the same process of creating additional subassemblies, but I want to show you a couple other tools that you can use in here. So, let me activate the electrical subassembly. In one of my other windows, I have an electrical component that I want to put in there. But again, when I've been defining my structure, there's no geometry in here aside from what I have in my skeleton to locate it. So I just want to have it appear in my product structure, but I don't want to define constraints at this time. So after activating the subassembly, if I go to the drop down menu from the assemble command, there is an include command. And from here, I can select the part and click open and it doesn't bring open the component placement dashboard. I don't have to define any constraints. And if you take a look at the symbol in the model tree, it looks like a part model, but it's grayed out and has that, those dashed lines around it, which means that it's included. In other words, it appears in the model tree, but it doesn't bring in any geometry whatsoever. And the last object that I'm going to place in my product structure is going to be a bulk item. So this vehicle is going to be painted at some point. I want it to reflect that I need to procure paint at some point. So I'm going to add some paint to the structural subassembly. So I will activate it, go to the create button, and I've created a part, I've created a subassembly, I've created a skeleton model. This time I'm going to create a bulk item. And a bulk item is an object that's not going to have any geometry. I'll click OK. And the creation options dialog box, it allows me to select a bulk model template. And there's an option to edit parameters and relations that's automatically checked. I'll click OK out of here. And for my bulk item, it's got these different parameters in here. Maybe I want to create another parameter, and I'm going to have it be called quantity. Change that from a real number to a string, because usually I just want to indicate that the value should be as required. Use as much as you need, and I'm not going to specify an exact amount. And there you see the bulk item in my model tree, which is represented with a bucket symbol. So at this point, I would proceed on with these different steps, creating additional 
subassemblies, creating skeleton models, creating subassemblies within subassemblies and parts within subassemblies, because when I'm defining the product structure, essentially what I'm doing is I'm laying out the bill of materials. So thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed this video.